Today, I'll be attempting to answer this question by conducting some real-world usage tests on this laptop with the help of a lightweight Linux distribution. Before jumping into things, let's take a look at the hardware we're dealing with. This computer may be pretty unimpressive by modern standards, but upon its release in 2007, it pushed the limits of how much computing power could be crammed into an ultra-portable laptop. Under the hood, this thing is packing a Core 2 Duo T8100, a mid-range, dual-core, dual-threaded CPU from 2007 with a clock speed of 2.10GHz. This really doesn't sound too bad on paper, but the processor's old architecture means that its performance should be comparable to that of an entry-level laptop from a couple years ago, such as this Acer Chromebook. I can tell you from experience that this thing isn't exactly fast, so my hopes for the ThinkPad aren't super high. Paired with the Core 2 Duo is 4GB of DDR2 RAM, which I upgraded from the original 2GB for about 15 bucks. This is probably the most important upgrade you could make to a laptop like this, since 2GB of RAM just won't cut it anymore in 2023, especially if you intend to open more than a couple of tabs in the web browser. Luckily, performing this upgrade was extremely easy, only requiring the removal of two screws from the bottom of the machine. This is probably my favorite aspect of older laptops like this. The vast majority of components are easily user upgradable. It is thanks to this upgradability that using such an old computer in 2023 is even remotely feasible. You can literally extend its useful life by a couple of years through simple upgrades. This is in stark contrast to modern laptops, where most components are soldered to the motherboard and can't be replaced, or are very difficult to access. This means that if a part breaks or you find yourself needing more RAM or storage down the line, you very well may need to purchase an entirely new computer, which creates unnecessary e-waste and frustration. When it comes to storage, I'll be using an old 750GB, 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive. This isn't what the machine would have come with, but it's what I had on hand, and the performance shouldn't differ much from the original. For a nice speed improvement, you could pick up a solid state drive for around 20 bucks, but for the purposes of this video, I'll be sticking with a hard drive, since it's what you'll find in most older PCs. The last major component to talk about is the graphics processor, which is definitely this laptop's weak point. It features an Intel GMA X3100 graphics strip, which has a core clock of 320MHz and 8 shader units. However, it doesn't have any onboard video memory, and instead utilizes up to 384MB of the laptop's much slower system RAM, which will definitely hurt performance. This of course also means that the operating system won't have access to the full 4GB of RAM. The chip supports up to DirectX 10 and OpenGL 1.5 on Windows, but can actually support up to OpenGL 2.1 under Linux. So, all in all, it's definitely not the worst computer out there, but it's quite underpowered by modern standards. Now, time to talk about the operating system. Given this laptop's limited hardware, I'd say that modern versions of Windows are pretty much off the table. This thing barely even meets the minimum hardware requirements for Windows 11, and its hardware isn't officially supported, though there are workarounds for that. I have no doubt that it could handle Windows 10 or heavier weight Linux distributions like Pop! OS, but these options use 1-2GB of RAM while idle and would generally make for somewhat of a sluggish experience, especially since we are using a hard drive. Older versions of Windows like 7 would have no problem running on here, but they stopped receiving security updates years ago and it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use them in 2023 when so many great lightweight Linux distributions exist, which give you the added benefits of being far more customizable, secure, and privacy respecting than Windows. Some of the more popular options out there include Zorn OS Lite, Linux Mint XFCE, Lubuntu, and Peppermint OS, just to name a few. I, however, was feeling a bit adventurous, and ended up going with Void Linux, which is a lesser known, independently developed rolling release distribution with an emphasis on minimalism and speed. In keeping with this theme, Void uses Run as its init system, which is far more resource efficient than System D, and should help speed the system up a little. Void Linux comes in a couple different flavors, but I opted to go with the variant that ships with the XFCE desktop environment. XFCE is pretty light on system resources, using under 300MB of RAM on startup. This is about a gigabyte less than what Windows 10 uses, and the extra RAM that's freed up can go towards actually running programs rather than being eaten up by the operating system. XFCE is also quite customizable, which is good, since the default look is a bit dated in my opinion. After playing around with a couple different configurations, I settled on a theme that loosely imitates macOS, which is ironic, since this old ThinkPad is basically the antithesis of a modern MacBook. Yes, it's much older and slower, but it's dirt cheap, 
has a great selection of ports, is user upgradable, and has a hugely different design language and feature set. Now that I've triggered all the Mac users watching, let's move on to the benchmarks. In order to provide a better point of reference, I know I should probably compare the performance of Linux to Windows 10, but I really don't feel like installing Windows for the sole purpose of testing it out. I've used Windows 10 on hardware similar to this in the past, and you'll just have to take my word for it when I say that it's generally not a great experience. With that said, let's see if Linux can breathe some new life into this 16 year old laptop. Starting off with general usage, I'm happy to report that things felt snappy and responsive. Opening basic programs, using the file manager, navigating menu systems, searching for apps, and other things of that nature worked just fine. Performing system updates and installing programs was also really convenient, thanks to the blazing fast XBPS package manager and the relatively comprehensive software repositories it has access to. Playing music, editing text files, and viewing local media including high resolution photos and 1080p video also worked quite well. Productivity tasks like writing up a document in LibreOffice also worked flawlessly, and the same can be said for web apps like Google Docs or Google Slides. In fact, I ended up using the X61 to write the script for this video. So, it can handle basic tasks, but what about web browsing? I decided to test out a couple of websites using ungoogled Chromium, since Chrome's Blink browser engine tends to outperform the quantum engine used in Firefox, especially in older hardware. I will be conducting these tests over Ethernet and will be using the uBlock Origin browser extension. Search engines and lighter weight web pages like Wikipedia loaded quickly and ran smoothly. The same can be said for slightly heavier pages like GitHub or eBay. This will generally be the case for pages that don't use tons of JavaScript and bandwidth, though fully loading some pages can take a little while on occasion. Social media sites with lots of images such as Reddit also worked fine as long as you don't scroll too fast. But what about heavier websites? Google Earth, which took a good 20 seconds to load, definitely pushed the CPU to its limits and really wasn't a good experience. For some reason, water also wasn't rendering correctly. Luckily, YouTube fared much better. The website itself felt snappy, and video playback worked flawlessly at up to 720p. 1080p kinda worked, but suffered from frequent stuttering, buffering, and frame drops. Using the H.264 browser extension probably would lend you some slightly better performance, but really, there's not much of a point in going beyond 720p, since screens on most old laptops like this can't display higher resolutions anyways. Before moving on, I should note that opening multiple browser tabs is also completely doable. Here, I have 10 websites fully loaded, and only 1700 megabytes of RAM are being used, which is around what Windows 10 uses with nothing open. Pretty impressive. By the way, if you want to know more about this laptop's many unique features beyond what I covered here, This Does Not Compute made an excellent video on just that, which I'll link in the description. With that said, if you made it this far in the video, congrats! you have a longer attention span than 90% of people on the internet. In all seriousness though, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you dislike the video and are still watching for whatever reason, feel free to hit the dislike button. Oh wait, YouTube removed that. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a good one.